welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Steven here, who is a lot of things. He's in a, a, a game attraction designer. He's a screenwriter. He's a whole bunch of things. Thank you so much for being on the channel. How are you, Steve? I'm great. Thanks uh, for having me, Mr. Theme Park Wizard. You're welcome. So um, you worked on your part of Nintendo several years ago. Um, what can you tell us about that, just that process? Was it fun? Was it, how did you, how did it even happen? Did you like apply? Well, just to be clear, we're talking about Super Nintendo World um, at Universal Parks and Resorts. Yes. Uh, because, you know, although we did, you know, say Nintendo a lot, we do say Nintendo a lot. It can mean so many different things depending mm -hmm. on the context. So, yeah, in this context, exactly. Yeah, I was part of the, the team that helped bring it to life. Oh, okay, perfect. Sorry, this my no, wife okay. cut out. <laughs> but, so, were you, um, so for Super Nintendo World, were you just part of, like, one or all of them? Like, is it this, do they do the same team for, like, Orlando, Japan, and Hollywood? Or is it different type, different teams for different, for each project? Just like every land that's uh, produced probably by all the parks. Now, I don't have experience at Disney, um, but yeah, each one is sort of erected by a different team. The plans might change from land to land depending on the site and what's sort of required by it. And then, you know, teams change, people come and go. Um, and yes, there are different project teams at different sites. So um, I can't say I know everyone uh, currently on the project that's uh, brought it to life uh, in Hollywood uh, this month. Um, but, you know, um, I do have some friends and associates that are still on the team. You know, it's a really big pipeline. It's sort of an amazing thing to witness. I mean, the first concepts, I believe, uh, for Super Nintendo World at this point, I think we're about 12 years old, 10 or 12 years old. So it took a long oh, wow. time to kind of get it out the door and get it something that was actually in production. So when I joined the team, um, in, uh, uni at Universal Parks and Resorts uh, in Florida, um, the first job was to work on the site uh, in Japan. Um, and then we uh, went to work on the site in Hollywood. Now, there's more sites coming online. I don't uh, have a lot of information about those. Very interesting. Wow. So the oldest concept would be like basically 2011. That's Ooh, I was in still in uh, middle school. Yeah, you know, that could be rough. You know, it's been a while since I looked and spoke to the team about it. But, yeah, they've been around for a while. And so these things take a long time to kind of percolate. And even myself, I haven't been uh, on contract with Universal for about five years. Um, but it's, you know, so uh, beautiful to kind of see uh, the work come to life and, you know, to have it here in the United States. Because it's it's been in Japan. It's been a big hit. Um, but mm -hmm. I haven't been able to share it stateside. So, uh, you know, you can go ride it today, which is uh, which is an amazing thing to be able to say. Soup and it's super super cool, and I rode it a couple times yesterday. Very very fun attraction. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, you know those soft openings at Thursday, Friday, Saturday, including and even one I saw it right now. Very helpful. Now they I, don't have the power bands working yet, right? They do actually. Yes, I have my oh, Mario one, oh, and I have. Let's see. I can tell you how many points I have actually right now. Use the app? Yeah, it's on my app here. Ah! And I have, a, I have, let's see, 2,967 points and 46 stamps. I got the Gold Mushroom, the Defeated Bowser Jr. I got the uh, Mario, I, Team Mario 1 on Mario Kart. So I got the trophy there. I got the star one. I don't know how I got that one. See, um, <laughs> oh, I collected a superstar power up. And so yeah, I am. I'm. I'm on my coin collection. That's um, awesome. Congratulations. Cool. This app. I don't know if you're part of designing this app too, or any part of this app. But this app is very cool. Yeah, um, it's, you know, we. Um, I was part of a t special sort of team that sort of was brought in, almost like consultants to help the traditional project team there. So yeah, we sort of helped tune the whole land to make it the best game we could help Universal deliver. So the, uh, the app was a big part of that um, and the wearables 
um, to kind of really integrate everything so that it does feel like you're inside of a, a living game world, right? And let me tell you, it did like a perfect job. Everyone oh, wow. I went with, Thanks so much. That's great. That. It lit, I shared my photos with my family. And they're like, wow, it looks like you're right. The game, they're not even Mario fans. I've only played one Mario game myself, but I love this thing. This is super cool. So yeah, It's kind of yeah. interesting. Thank, thanks yeah. so much. I mean, I sort of felt the same because um, one of the reasons I went to work on, on this project, or should I say on Super Nintendo World, uh, was because of the amazing work done um, by the team at Universal Creative on the Wizarding World of Harry Potter um, and the use of language. the interactives with the wand. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, being able to come in and see how they did that, I wasn't a fan of Harry Potter beforehand, to be honest. I you know, sort of liked it. I watched it with my kids. But once I was able to experience the lands and the park, I love Potter now. I love the music. Um, I love the, the the presence of being in this space and the sense of magic there. And it's brought me to go rewatch the films. Now, I haven't read the books, um, but I, it's, it's sort of interesting that you would say that, too, that, you know, you're not necessarily a hardcore Mario fan, but, you know, this is like a renewed mm -hmm. kind of passion that's kind of come out of experience, if, I'm sorry, experiencing it uh, firsthand. Yeah, and, you know, same with the... Uh... Uh, Harry Potter, I actually worked as a ride operator for Britain Journey. Oh, but awesome. That's I like, always wanted to work out. Like, you know, it's actually really, really fun. And everyone, I'm sure you experienced this on your team, but everyone was so nice. All the team members of the universe are so helpful and so nice. And because, you know, that ride. Great, great, great fresh. sense of the spirit of kind of camaraderie, right? Yeah, it's so cool. And but that land, that was my first time stepping to the land when I worked there in twenty eighteen. And I was like, Wow, this is super cool. It actually made me go watch eight Harry Potter movies because I'm like, I wanna know what everything was. I want I saw I should watch all eight. And I watched all eight again on eight uh, during the <laughs> pandemic. I'm like, these are great, these are so bingeable. I love now I'm such a big fan of Harry Potter. And you know, Nintendo World might me do the same. I was there again Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I might go today. Oh, fun. Yeah. So I guess you're an annual pass holder? Yeah, I'm the platinum pass. I'm the okay, so are you able right. to like get like a to, to schedule a preview time and stuff like that? Yeah, so my annual pass holder preview is on January 29th. I got invited to a couple team member previews next week. Oh, fun. But for this soft open, I just, um, they started testing the virtual line yesterday. So I was able, well, I got a time, but after three, I can just use Express and skip that. But the first phase was kind of just Didn't a free the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and man, so fun. I mean, you know, we spent all day there too, by the way. Look, yesterday from 11 to 5, all day. I forgot there was the rest of Universal outside Do there. Do you know if the mushroom but, popcorn made it? Like, are we serving it mushrooms? Not. Oh, that I do it. <laughs> it didn't I know seem right. Because... It didn't seem right, but I was hoping for that degree of authenticity. <laughs> a lot of people were asking, for, at least online, these forums are there asking for that. <laughs> well, hopefully, maybe in the future. But the drinks, the um, about the the Mario, the Luigi, and Peach, like creams, or like what are they? I don't know what it's called, but it's like a. It tastes like Sprite. Well, I guess, I guess they use Sprite, but. But ice cream and it's like boba, and there's, and this drink is really good. Um, and the yeah, you know, I don't think that's the merch team. You know, you'll have to forgive me. It's been a while. So, but yeah, the team at Universal, though, you know, that's the team behind Butterbeer and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Butterbeer wasn't real until they made it real, and now mm -hmm. it's like a thing. So, yeah, I'm sure they've done a great job with uh, bringing some edibles to life for uh, Super Nintendo World. No, you know, back when I was on the project, it was all sort of talk, and the merch was all sort of talk. But eventually, mm -hmm. it's really sort of like everything at that point. It kind of gets handed over to other teams who kind of take it further. Mm -hmm. See, and isn't that cool? Because you're talking about it like maybe a, a decade or so ago, right? And then all of a sudden, you see it like in real life, like, hey, that's the thing I was just talking about. And now it looks exactly how I was just thinking about. It's especially surreal. I mean, um, you know, thinking of uh, just the scripts that I had or the documents that I had or the prototypes we built. Hey, buddy, I'm on, on an interview now. Sorry, that's my son. Um, hey! I'm, I'm, I hope you get to you want, you want to come say hi, buddy? Okay, here, I'm on, I'm on with the theme park wizard. Say hey. Hi. 
He helped yeah. uh, the, thing, the things he helped on, you know, like uh, the Yoshi ride didn't didn't make it to Hollywood. So, well, you know, are you excited to go? Did he go? Did he go to the one in Japan? No, yeah. we haven't had a chance to because of COVID and everything else. So yeah, we're really excited to get out there. We have annual passes, but but out here, so we're we're currently plotting on uh, uh, getting over there. And you know, there never was like a real proper opening for the team, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. So you know, hopefully, it, it, particularly for the people that are, are there full time now working on it, they they get a chance to celebrate and enjoy the enjoy the launch. Yeah, he's gonna love it. I'm. I kept thinking as I was going through, the, I was like. If you're a child, you're gonna like go ballistic or something. Like yeah, I'm over in Florida now, so it's supposed to show up here in a couple of years, and I'm really excited for that. And you're lucky you guys get the full thing, which is cool. You get the Donkey Kong, the Yoshi, and the Mario Kart. So you get the massive, the massive thing, um, which would be a cool world to play around in because the Donkey Kong coaster. I don't know if you're a part of that, but that looks amazing. It was certainly Crash, being jumping over the driving. tracks and it's jumping. A, it's a really cool ride. Like super, super cool. And so you are officially a game attraction designer, correct? Yeah, I started at Universal That's as a cool. manager of software development, and a couple of weeks in, they mm -hmm. said, "Hey, we made this new position for people like you," and I was the second to take it. My buddy Neil, who's an amazing guy. Um, he was actually the first, I believe. So yeah, we're called uh, Game Attraction Designers was our title. So is that only for like Mario Kart or can that go for any attraction? But I guess it's a game which I actually like. So, so just for Nintendo? That position. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know since uh, where it's gone, and you know, I'm not privy mm -hmm. to that information. So I do hope um, that it's a position that um, is growing and continues to be hired for, because I do think it's a special position with special considerations. Um, some people don't necessarily understand it and would think, oh, you're a traditional attraction designer, you're an architect, and you understand CAD. Well, no, I do architecture, but it's a sort of a different architecture. It's the architecture of a game to create a meaningful experience for players. And that's really been my job for 20 years. And I, you know, I, or more now, <laughs> I've uh, <laughs> worked in, you know, some big, video, worked in big video games for a long time um, and then became an independent developer and was doing like kind of location-based stuff for clients. Um, and one day someone called me uh, looking for talent to help out build this. And I said, hey, you're kind of uh, perfect for this. So they brought me in and, um, yeah, it was interesting because at that point, you know, so much work had already been done. It was really breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the job of me and my team was to really um, help uh, take the work uh, that had been created and really drive it home as a game um, that because it's, you know, as you, you know, better than anyone right now, or at least as well as anyone that's experienced it. It's really a different thing. And the things that it we're trying really to do are new and haven't been done in parks before. So, um, but but in the realm of video games, they might see, seem sort of commonplace. But here in this space, in the theme park space, it's sort of revolutionary. And I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this. You know, that's exactly correct. Because um, for the Mario Kart attraction, particularly, and when I wrote it, someone asked me, they said, what other ride would you compare this to? And you know, I couldn't think of a good answer because I'm like, hmm, Midway Mania. But I was like, no, that's mostly shooting. I was like, web slingers. And I was like, but then it's like a fantasy and dark ride. I don't know. But you couldn't <laughs> think of an actual ride to like compare it to because it's like so like new. Like it's like a mix of different rides put together in a giant cool ride. Forgive and me, you're supposed to be interviewing me, but like I know you you've probably spent plenty of time in Galaxy's Edge, right? Yeah. How do you I think have. it compares? Like, where? I mean, is are they this? Are they similar? Do you feel like one is more successful than another, and why? And it's funny. We were just talking about this. My other friends, um, I usually collab a lot with uh, Orange Go Fifty Five, their their YouTube channel. But one of the guys, he were talking about how Galaxy's Edge was up all this interactive stuff. You know, the roaming joys and the, and the infrastructure is built for touch points and stuff like that and missions. But then it all got cut before the land opened. So now it feels now empty and dry and like big empty space. Mm -hmm. The great ride, but that's it. And that's why I was like, man, if Galaxy Edge had all this stuff Nintendo had, it would be 
Chef's kiss would be so good. <laughs> That's so but nice. But it's all cut. Thing. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's sad. Like, even the live shows, like, I had hoped they would mm -hmm. stick to the live shows. But, you know, I don't want to dog Disney. I love what Disney does. And I'm a Disney fan. You can't help it. You know, I grew up Disney. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they sort of shortchange us a lot. And I don't know how much of this is strategic. Um, and mm -hmm. how much of it is just a, a you know part of the process but you know they promise a lot usually when they bring on a land i mean we all thought galaxy's edge was really going to go over the top with immersion and all of it like you said seemed to be you know just slowly kind of cut to the point where it's just the land and the rides um yeah it's sort of sad yeah. and i was hoping i remember when we were talking yesterday i was like man it's like maybe nintendo world right will push universe i'm not disney to add some of that stuff back in even if it wasn't everything they originally wanted even, even just like half of it like even just like again just uh, some well, missions the, and the real thing know, is some, 14 acres i was like forgive me for judging you but you seem pretty young um so and you probably mm -hmm. grew up playing games. I mean, I'm, an old, I'm an old nerd yeah 26 so you're, you're relatively young right so i'm a, a good mm -hmm. like, little nerd. baby <laughs> but you know it's, it's sort of what you expect right i mean you expect to go and have a level of interactivity with stuff so it's almost like i don't know going backwards in time when you go to a place that isn't connected with this stuff and doesn't let you interact with it right yeah it's uh ah, so so weird i really hope they put that well, in there so, so to that i think they have to because mm -hmm. uh, changing needs of audiences and, you know, people like yourself will experience other things and you'll come at it, you know, their, their creations with similar expectations. Well, why can't I be a character here? Why can't I have some achievements? Why can't this story be more about what I'm doing rather than, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the hero from, you know, the, the tentpole film and everyone's kind of cheering them on to the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to pick on Disney so much. So when I went to work at Universal on this stuff, um, uh, when I first rode the attraction, uh, which was the Transformers attraction, at first I was really into it. But when I started thinking mm -hmm. of it as an interactive experience and even Gringotts, Gringotts is probably maybe a better example because Transformers mm -hmm. sort of works and I still really like it. But if you really look at what's happening, they're like cheering you on as the guest, right? You get in there, mm -hmm. and you're going to save the world kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, if you have the right team members there, they're like, yeah, you did it. And there's that little clap. Yeah. <laughs> I got a clap. And so uh, I, I was just the jaded old game designer. But one day I got off and there was this younger gentleman in front of me, nine, maybe 11. You know, Optimus Prime does that thing. He's like, thank you for saving the world, you man. Yeah, at the very end. And this like, kid was like, nothing. And I was like, <laughs> and, I was like <laughs> and I was like, that kid gets it. That kid gets it. He knows he can do anything. Yeah. And we yet, literally as he's being championed as a hero for saving the day. Like, that doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. You know, on Transformers, you're right. It's actually a, a big, since it's all screens, it's a big canvas to really but some interactivity could be shooting Megatron as he comes at you or something like that'd be a really good interactive experience and then yeah you're at Optimus Hump and think it's for actually something because <laughs> we just sit there and watch everything happen right now <laughs> but and I feel like even with the screens that could be kind of you know upgraded or something you know just Transformers 2.0 add something to shoot um shoot the you know Megatron or something I feel like that shouldn't be too hard, but definitely a good well, idea. Well, you know, it's um, it seems not hard, but you know, we'd we'd often joke. Uh, my my buddy Neil and I we joke, hey, you know, see that flower over there? You know, when we're done with our job, it'll be seven feet that way. So sometimes, you know, and the joke was we just don't have that much effect because it's such a big machine that even little baby steps like take a lot. So yeah, something, some, some simple sort of interactivity, maybe phone-based interactivity. You know, I mean, we already sort of have that with uh, some of the, I forget what it's called, the Disney Go app or whatever it is. Oh, um, the play parks, yeah. Yeah, and, they, and they, you know, they have the, the you know, some level of kind of gamification going on, but it's, it's not enough. But, you know, to go and add more after the fact um, is sort of um, antithetical to creating meaning. Right. No, we can can sort of do it, but 
you know, I have people do this to me as a game designer sometime. They come to me and they've got this thing that they made up. And they say, oh, but now we need to turn it into a game. I'm like, oh, this is this is kind of backwards. This is the same mm -hmm. thing, like why Star Wars will never really be a game. Because it never was made that way, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's made to be about this core group of heroes that overcome the Empire. And now they've tried to expand it into this other stuff, but it's just not part of the the... The, the corpus of that work. So Nintendo is different, right? And so when mm -hmm. fans of Nintendo come to a place that's Nintendo, um, it has to have a certain language to it. And that language is not just graphics. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just a characters. It's how it engages with you, right? It's that feeling of when you use or when you're inside of and when you participate with something Nintendo. And it's it's got a certain quality to it. So and that's that's mm -hmm. a new and different thing, really. That's that's partial to the property itself. So you know, if, if someone would say you could argue the same thing would happen if there was like an Xbox park, um, or maybe with uh, some of the stuff. I know Ubisoft is mm -hmm. working on attractions now. Um, you know, there's a language of a game. There's a language of interactivity already there that that, that comes with those expectations. Yeah, that makes sense. Like in its DNA, so to speak. It's like that is the land's DNA. Yeah, which, exactly. yeah, it does make sense. So, like Potter, yeah. for instance. Like, I mean, I know when mm -hmm. I go to Potter, I want to like jump in. I don't know what's going on back there. Anyway, I want to jump in. I want to be a wizard. You know, I like want to. I want to go to Hogwarts. You know, I like. I really want to like be part of the world. Um, but because of the nature of that property, we sort of reached this limit where. We're not mm. Harry Potter. We're not a main character in Potter. Um, we can't really attend Hogwarts. There are some RPGs on mobile, um, but Potter RPG, um, you know, the story I'm always told is actually JK doesn't particularly like the idea. Um, and, you know, this is, this is old. This is through the grapevine, so it might not mm. be true. Um, but I understand the sentiment because it comes from traditional authorship. And that author says, mm. whoever it is, I make the characters. No, you don't mm. make the I make the characters and you watch you watch the stories I tell you about the characters I've made. And that's what mm -hmm. I do. Whereas a game designer, no, we want you to make the characters. We want you to be invested in those characters. And we want the story to be about your actions. Um, so that's not, again, that's not Harry Potter. Yeah, that's totally correct because it's like a different story. Yeah, Nintendo really looks because it's like, again, it's just like game. That's why I really can't wait. I hope someone perhaps the Sonic franchise into a theme park because that would be also ride. be a really I'd cool love to do the Sonic ride. Yeah. I mean, like, not even just, I mean, it'd be fun to make one, but I'd love to ride one. <laughs> yeah, like, imagine getting all the rings. Like, oh my, I love those movies yeah, and right? the like ride. The of, like, going through, like, a spiral. And, like, yeah, like, oh! Like, right? <laughs> I think game, I think after this game based lands will really take off at some of these bigger theme parks um, because they're just so fun. I mean, even the AR binoculars that you guys have in the, on the top lands, they're so convincing. Like, so cool. Every time I see I people do like, wow. a podcast all about that, I hate to give the plug, but I'm going to do it. He calls it Amusement do Spark. It. So he helps me. I've got my own game park I'm working on now called Giant Lands. And so he's helped me do a, um, a podcast for it. But yeah, Amusement Sparks is all about that. Like I'm playing, making amusement parks. Um, that are game based. So he's got a ton of uh, shows on there. You might even be able to. I'm not sure if he's still doing them, but just get on there. And you know what? You know what do you do if you do it? Uh, make a a park about Halo, or if you do make a park about mm -hmm. a different property. So each of the shows, he kind of looks at a different property and says, "Hey, we're going to make an Animal Crossing park. Like, how do we? Oh, that would be like, fun. How do we do that? And so, so it's a it's a fun thought exercise." That would be fun. Yeah, I'm def I'll link that down. We'll put it in the description because that's I'll have been yeah, absolutely watching those sound really, really fun because ah yeah, Pokemon, I mean Zelda, yeah, Sonic, there's so many and games have like still the test of time. They're kind of the same. I even if it's a, some of the games have made changes, the idea is still is kind of the same throughout the years, just upgraded graphics. I mean Martin Nintendo and Mario open around since decades ago and they're still the same kind of idea um storyline as you know movies they're they're always changing they get out of flavor but nintendo's pretty pretty uh 
popularity wise. Like, yeah, let's see though. Difference. Let's see. Let's see what happens with this movie, right? I'm super excited about this movie. When oh, I remember yeah, when I was on the job gorgeous. and we were talking about it, I thought, oh, this is not gonna work out. You know, Mario movies never work out. But mm. holy cow, it looks amazing. I am so yeah. so excited. Looks and even like gorgeous. references to the land in in the movie. But, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I did catch some of those in the trailer. You know, there's I mean, like it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's only in what April seventh, it's only a few more months. Super excited because that looks chef's kiss again, like illumination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Fantastic Perfect. job. And even even Pratt, even Pratt is sounding really good. So gotta love Yeah, it. you know, he's uh, everyone sounds great, looks great, and I love the the little Mario Kart segment. It's Great, and then the music. I can't wait to oh, three D, huh? That'd be so cool. Oh yeah, oh, that's gonna be amazing. So, how did Mario oh, man. feel? And like, back at the music huh? of the movie. That makes me think of Mario's oh. presence, like the oh, music on Mario Kart. Sorry, one more time. When you were on the ride, when you were on Mario Kart, how did you feel about Mario? Did you interact uh -huh. with him at all? On the ride, I uh, did. I interact. With, I. Didn't I don't think only because there's so much happening, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And then my out of my two rides, one of them I filmed them, filmed the POV, and then the other one, um, which we coming out at noon today, or oh, noon oh, cool. January fifteenth. Um, and the other one I was just, just you know, moving my eyes like, okay, I move my head, that's how I aim, I press the button, that's how I shoot, cool. Very easy, by the way. I love how it's very super easy anyone can figure out. And then I was just looking at all the sets and the scenes, and I was, then I was shooting, but I was like, wow, this set's massive. And I was like, wow, is this AR or is this real? And I was like, wow, nope, this is real. And the AR is like crystal clear. That's great. Crystal clear. It's like, it's like, again, there's no spoiler alert. by the time this comes out the POV will be out so but the um <laughs> the giant Bowser statue or Bowser when he's on fire there yeah, in, in the ride yeah in the ride yeah I really thought that was AR but then I looked at my video again I looked I was like wait no here that's really happening <laughs> but it's so convincing I was like I couldn't tell which one it is because that's the camera was so good most compelling parts about this uh, attraction, uh, particularly as a piece of sort of universal and universal history, uh, because uh, here we have such a layering of screens. It's almost like the only comparison I can think of of rides that are out there are uh, River Journey, but at the Navi River Journey, right? We have mm -hmm. these multiple layers of screens as you're, you're proceeding down the river. And sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, which is the animatronic and which is the projection, unless you really pay attention, right? So here yeah. we had even more layering of that, and you have your HMD on. So we have this really interesting blending that's happening between items and various different media formats that are coming together as one experience for you, the guest. It's it's really neat. Yeah, you know, you have just me have created my favorite ride at Universal. It's funny because so my favorite things at you know before this right now, Jurassic World, Mummy, and Potter, you know, kind of more thrilling ones. But this is so cool. I got up and I got up again. I think I got better the second time. Like, wow, this is so cool. We like, worked so hard on play replayability, so that's a wonderful thing to hear. And I like how you can tap the power band to the you know the steering wheel and they clicked all the coins and I like how each time you do it and even the mini games how each one the level goes you level up and it gets harder like again it makes you want to go again but what I couldn't believe it in the station the queue the extended queue the station the right Mario Kart is like almost a 10 like basically a 10 out of 10 the queue is incredible yeah, the queue was so That's fun to work on. I'm glad I got to participate in that because there was so much talent poured into it. And I never realized until kind of really, you know, having to study the queues, just how mm -hmm. vital it is to the show. So, the, you know, um, the Tom, the creative director on it, really worked hard to produce a wonderful queue. And it was a special solution there for Hollywood. So that's that's great to hear. Did you, so did you also have a part in Japan's queue or just Hollywood's queue? Oh, I did them both. 
I, I worked on them both, yes. And they were because they, they had to be did slightly. You take, yeah. Did you like, uh, did you, since Hollywood obviously a different space layout, did you take the time like to improve the cube? Did you say, hey, here's, we have to make the cube this bigger. Let's do this something different with Japan, than Japan's version. Or did you yeah, want I mean, to? I wasn't a director fun? on it, so I just sort of did my job um, as kind of delineated to me to try to make it the best cue uh, that we could. And yeah, we knew we had less space, so that changes how we tell the story because we work really hard to tell a story in cue, and particularly because in Japan, um, mm -hmm. uh, at least at the time, uh, the information we were looking at was saying that basically Japanese guests really like standing in queue. Um, it's part of the experience to them. And having worked on the Tapu Tapu virtual alliance system, I can say it's really interesting once you remove the, the queue from the guest experience uh, because it's so core to everything we kind of people expect about parks. So yeah, they worked really hard to make it a great queue, or we worked really hard to make it a great queue for Japan, and then just had to basically make it a little smaller uh, for the Hollywood footprint. And so what that means is basically we have to remove certain story elements. So that's up to the directors on it to say, hmm, what what pieces of this really make a difference? And you know, we can give our um, uh, opinions on it, but at the end of the day, it's it's really up to those kind of leading the vision. Uh, to decide, you know, what those major beats that we're going to be focusing on in the story in queue. Yeah, see, I say that because I, I don't think I've seen, oh, I've seen a walkthrough of Japan's, but it's been a while, but these forms that I watch, I see, we have, there's a whole thread about them, I.O. Cart Review, and just about all of the people say on there say that our queue in Hollywood is superior than Japan's, so hmm. that's why I was curious if I was like, man, maybe they made some improvements and maybe they took some idea. But yeah, so congrats. It's maybe a smaller space, but they really seem, it seems to improve the design of, of the queue. It seems to improve from park to park. So uh, that interesting, interesting. I know. Yeah, I, mean, I, would, I would love to experience them both relatively side to side so I can make that judgment. Having not, I, I don't know. But so, um, you know, and having worked on it so long ago, I'm sure more changes were made. Um, and again, not just um, to work into the space itself, but sort of the changing uh, expectations of audience. You know, a good example of that that's happened in real time uh, in the soft launch is people saying, oh, it's all in Japanese, <laughs> which is mm. sort of cool. I mean, anyone that got to experience it in Japanese, that, that was special. I think that was pretty cool because the English captions there and they did change to the English version. But yeah, that's cool. Like you're in Japan. Second there, you got a window until to what's running in Japan, right? Which is cool. Yeah. And man, and in the queue, I like how each like room is like a different game, you know? Yeah. Go in and like there's Mario Galaxy, right? And then you go and by the way, the Mario Galaxy room has a great heater and it was raining yesterday. So I was like, I want to stay in here. <laughs> but then Yoshi's Island is there. Then you go up the stairs, and then all of a sudden you're, and you go outside for a second, and you pop in the Bowser's Castle. The Bowser's Castle has so many Easter eggs. I'm sure. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. I'm not the big most knowledgeable about Mario, but I'm sure it has so many Easter eggs. I saw Paper Mario in there. That was cool. That little that paid the Paper Mario sculpture uh di diaphragm you got there. There's so much, like, there's so much to look at. The queue goes by so fast, like yeah. that. We did an hour, but it felt like 20 minutes because there's just like, I'm looking around, looking around, and all of a sudden, I'm there. Incredible yeah, stuff. It's sort of weird for me these days that, like, when the queue is less than 45 minutes, I'm like, I don't know. I think I need that long for the queue. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it's so cool. And for the ride, my friend wanted me to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I you're a part of this, but. He said, so for Mario Kart, I guess he was, I guess he was worried. He said Mario Kart, people are going to expect some fast ride. He was wondering what made the decision to make it a slow, dark ride. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty, the answer for that would pretty, be pretty complex and probably require a lot of people. What I will say about this is, um, although it does move at a slow pace, it's sort of uh, like other attractions at Universal where we tend to create the illusion of speed. 
Um, mm -hmm. Part of it too is because it's a traditional dark ride um, and you really are only on it for, uh, you know, I don't know what the final timing is, but about two minutes and 30 seconds, you know, that's mm -hmm. a sort of traditional timing for, for most uh, rides, particularly dark rides. You're just not there for that long. And there's so much that is happening um actually you know we had to like pull back and i you know after i was on the project i'm sure it happened even more where we had to really figure out the tuning uh between the pace of the ride itself how much we were trying to get in front of our guests and then also people interacting with th things because that's a that's sort of new right so you have all this mm -hmm. new stuff you've never seen before happening in front of you so and it, it takes on a certain sort of um uh, surreal quality and then you realize you have to act like you can actually interact with this stuff. It's not, you're not in Peter Pan, right? You're not just mm -hmm. kind of being slung up in front of these vignettes. Um, and it's not Ninjago. So it's not just, you know, spam city of units coming at you that you're, you're throwing stuff at. There's a sense of composition to it, you know, a sense of a rise and fall in tension that is really tuned in each one of those scenes as you're going through the ride. Um, so, you know, why the speed? It's probably so many different aspects. Um, I would say probably first and foremost, safety. Um, safety is a, a big issue. And particularly when you have um, a lot happening around you, especially when you're wearing media, um, it's prone. People can get prone to motion mm -hmm. sickness. Um, I don't know if you've experienced any of the theme park rides that have like reappropriated VR headsets for them. It's kind of neat. Uh, but at the same time, something about it doesn't feel too right. So if we kind of slow mm -hmm. it down while we're throwing all this stuff at you, um, the body seems to take it well. On the other hand, if you're moving really fast and everything is moving really fast, and you have a headset on, you know, you're gonna, you're not gonna feel too good pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you do a good job, especially the um, the beginning and then the Rainbow Road segment. Of like really like flying i'm like whoa we got it we're like speeding along here <laughs> um, i'm so excited to hear more reviews of rainbow road we worked so hard on that and there was so oh, much love yeah. put into all that ride but that's like a really special moment you actually got to go to rainbow road yeah that reveal there and the thing happening i'm like it's like a sensory overload in a great way like Whoa, we're here! And like, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. like oh, and that's what everyone was telling me when I was in because my my friends by the time I went in there, my first time, they already went on it a couple times. Like, you're gonna love the end. You're gonna love the end. I'm like, okay, what's happening at the end? And I was like, whoa, that's a lot happening <laughs> at the end. I like the end. Like, that's insane. This wouldn't, wouldn't be Mario Kart without Rainbow Road, right? Exactly. Like, that's like, and then I like how even the floor is painted in the rainbow road and then you stick that on top with the vr on top or ar on top and it's like like it's like there and yeah I mean, the, wizard, the wizard you know we're not allowed to talk about a lot of our tricks but i'm sure over the in the coming months uh universe will be revealing more about how some of that stuff was pulled off and it was it's mm -hmm. just so neat it's really neat stuff yeah like wow and so that part what, did you always, like, even when you came back on the project, did you always know you were going to have a Rainbow Road segment? Yeah, I mean, that was a decision made before I arrived on the team. And, you know, there was so much behind it. Like, I, I don't think there was any chance of it being cut. Because that was pretty incredible. But I also like the clouds. See, the clouds, <laughs> I knew the clouds were there from other um, videos and stuff and other pictures. But if I didn't see those, the clouds, I I would have thought maybe they were AR too. But because the other the other cloud figures were so like again crystal clear, like right there, you're like which one's which? I don't know how you guys are so perfect. But you seen any blue oh, shells yet? Any blue shells? Did I? I may have. I have to double check. So okay. many. Oh right, I forgot you haven't played that much. I shouldn't mention it. Yeah, you know, I but I'm gonna look now. I'm gonna be looking because there's just so much happening. And then going to the meet and greet carriers, Mario, Luigi, and Peach, they talk to you like that's cool. Like, <laughs> I was like, I want Mickey to talk to me. That's so cool. They blink and talk, it's like you have actual conversation with them. 
It's like you're you're just in the mushroom kingdom. Yes. Like, 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 like you're in there. Like you're just in. Like did you have a hand in the mini games as well? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was part of our team. So um yeah, the 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 Bowser Jr. storyline. Um, I'm not sure what the final name is for it for guests. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, part of the team that I was on and we worked uh, really hard to, to try to tune that up uh, to be a, a great experience with, you know, a series of interactives that are kind of, you know, again, it comes from the team that did the wand interactive. So they're really behind that. Um, and they were trying to take the wand interactives to kind of the next level um, and have, you um, you know, it's really a, an interesting thing if you look at the history of it, because we're talking about 10 acres of land or less, right? Mm -hmm. So this was a footprint of uh, a land previously at Universal. So here we're not only getting an e-ticket, I'm sorry, the footprint of a, of a ride, an e-ticket ride. And now that ride footprint is being turned into a land, right? So we still have the e-ticket. Then we have a land that you can kind of explore, and then you have a series of kind of mini games sprinkled throughout it. And this model really comes to us from Wizarding World. Um, and it was part of the genius behind that, that, you know, Universal is, is wisely kind of trying to replicate um, because it is so successful at, at driving a deeper engagement in the parks. Yeah, I, I feel like definitely with the Wizarding World walked, so <laughs> Nintendo could run. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's a, that's a great way to say it. Cool. You know, like, that's soup. Like, everything. Everything, even the random question blocks. Like, everything you can, like, touch. Even Toad's Cafe, the little gifts. Like, <laughs> that's cool. Like, I'm surprised you can't do anything in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we always joke that that would be fun to do, but you know, doing it in a way that's uh, family friendly might be challenging. So, yeah, like, wow, it's probably like, the one spot that's like not interact. Like, you know, I've funny, seen some, like, plenty fun bathroom games and some startups that you do it. Uh, they have, they tend to work better for certain bathroom setups. I'll say that, um, and they can be, um, you know, they can they can be fun. But yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe like maybe it's like a, an attraction for City Walk to do like during Halloween Horror Nights, but I don't know about it. Super Nintendo World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. And so that's sort of the fun of of, uh, of Universal really um, is that you are free to be an adult there as well. So it's not mm -hmm. like um, you know this dressing up and you know having to go full back into complete nostalgia like when you go to Disney. Um, but you know Nintendo sort of uh, is the opposite of that. Um, it, because it, in some ways it plays on that nostalgia. It's it's really kind of, I, I mean, in in my heart, like the he's the new Mickey, you know, and this is sort of um, mm -hmm. the new attraction to to bring younger audiences. But then you know, folks like yourself are into it. Older guys like me, and even older, are a little into it. I mean, I bought my first Nintendo when I was ten, and even as uh, oh, really? if I didn't work on it, I'd still be excited to bring my kid there. Uh, to go there myself and to step inside it. And I hope um, it produces the same sort of emotional responses um, that uh, Diagon Alley does to Potter fans. I mean, I would I used to stand there and watch it because I was like, this is what we need to make happen again. Mm -hmm. um, people go through that wall and suddenly they're inside Diagon Alley and they they start crying because it's so visceral this thing that previously was just in the imagination in a book and a movie, a place where mm. they feel safe and welcome to be themselves. It's like, oh my God, it's there and it's before them. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to see uh, people go down the warp pipe. Yeah, I, and I like how they design, you guys designed the words going in the curves a little bit and then <laughs> there it is. Like, wow. I'm sorry, speaking of crying. <laughs> Oh, on Thursday, when I went the first time after being there for like 30 minutes, I almost shed a tear. I almost did. I was I like, because there was like, I was like, wow, wow, there's so much going on. This is so cool. And I just couldn't stop. One thing I couldn't do was stop smiling the whole time. I was like, we did our job. That's how I know I, I did my job. I tell people the smiles, right? And, you know, at, at Universal, they're talking about guest satisfaction being the important thing. For me as a designer, like when I see a kid jumping up and down, when I see someone smiling, when I see them like getting along with their family, 
you know, just having a good time together. That's when I, I feel like, man, I did it. Like this, we like all of that work, the hard work and passion that went into that um, really produced uh, an experience that's transformative and brings people together and, you know, helps them see some of the magic in, in real life. Yeah, you know, it was, and everyone in there I saw was like, Smiling and having a good time with the games and having fun with the games. You see them all running around like, we gotta get up, we gotta get the clock, we gotta get the clock. Oh, we did it! And then when they, when that sounds, oof, the sounds right, I'm right out of the game. When you win or you lose, right out of the game. That's incredible. And the people start jumping up and down. I then they cheer. It's great. <laughs> and I'll never forget when it was under construction, but like almost done. Like you could see it was happening. <laughs> These just a few weeks ago, actually, two grown men were next to me. I was doing my construction update. There's grown men next to me. They're like, "Oh my gosh, look, it's Mario! Is it open?" And one of them just jumping up and down, saying, "Let's go right now!" And it was closed. But I was like, "Wow, look how excited he is for this!" Yeah, he is right. literally a grown man jumping up and down, up and down. No kids around. I was like, "Oh, I want to go on with this guy." Yeah. So, See, you did your that's, job that's, because that's the most beautiful. One. Thank you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't talk over you. Oh no, no. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, no, I mean that's that's for me. That's one of the more fun things about making games for parks, um, because previously I had worked <laughs> on some games that were really for a lot of hardcore audiences, and you're kind of dealing with these small groups of people that sort of get excited, but it gets kind of aggro, right? I think we all know that these days. That's not a secret. <laughs> Um, and coming to parks, it's like we really try to make experiences for everyone from different backgrounds, lifestyles, countries, languages, you know, because we want everyone ages to come there and like have a good time and to be able to escape the troubles of the real world and skip out on cynicism. I think for me, when I first realized this was happening in theme parks, I had a friend that was an Imagineer when I was at school um, out at USC. I went to grad school out there in L.A. And uh, he said, hey, guys, I'll take you on a tour of Disneyland. Do you want to come uh, check it out one day? And I was, you know, oh, well, you know, being the cynical, like, I, you know, I used to do that stuff, but, you mm -hmm. know, I'm older now and I'm more sophisticated, than, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went there, and as soon as I crossed that berm, it was like, mm -hmm. boom, all of that was gone, and I was a kid again. And I thought, man, that is, mm -hmm. that is something really, really marvelous. Um, that that can happen. So yeah, when you see like you know old farts uh, like myself or old <laughs> kind of like you know jumping up and down, getting excited about something, it's like man, there for a second, for a second they were like really inside of that that dream, and they didn't have any kind of cynicism about them, and that's that's really a, a magical and, and beautiful and tra transformative thing. So um, that's that's really cool to hear. Yeah, uh, super cool, and. You know, I, I, oh gosh, I, I, I might go back there today. I keep thinking about, it. I just keep thinking about the warp pipe and the sound. You know, you you guys, the sounds really adds to it. Something else that uh, I wish they put in Galaxy's Edge, the uh, Star Wars music. You know, sounds that everywhere you hear in the Nintendo music and the sounds and the games. It's something yeah. Universal Creative knows how to do, and they do it so beautifully. And all you have to do is go to any of the resorts and just walk through it. And music is such an integral part of the experience, and it just it makes everything so much more magical, right? I mean, yeah, you know, like, talking about the Potter thing, for instance, you yeah. know, that was sort of the, the fallback. But even with Potter music, I didn't know it before, but now when I hear those themes, like I know I'm in good for a good time. I know I'm in like a place where I can have fun and like be goofy, you know. Um, yeah, even with a, the Potter. Thing. So that's great to hear that uh, the you know the sounds are on for you. I've heard, I've seen some reviews of them, and uh, I'm sure you know just like everything in the park, you know, uh, we worked with the best and brightest to make sure uh, they they uh, they passed scrutiny from Nintendo and and also uh, pleased fans. Yeah, because like you know the for the in Potter, there's that kind of a bench near Forbidden Journey, and sometimes just sit there and listen to the. The, the exterior cue music that just plays because it's like, wow. Beautiful. It's so fun. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. <laughs> I just sit there with my butterbeer and I watch the <laughs> well, Oh, yeah. Like, wow. And you're like, mm. and then I can just imagine just going like this. I'm like, woo -wee. Yeah, right? And then just like, watching the people move past and it's just, 
it's such mm -hmm. a, and it's a really a synthetic totally created experience but it's it's marvelous how like we can it's like this ritual and we kind of set ourselves up to be fooled and to like step into the world and to just have fun there for a moment and yeah you know universal profits uh from doing this um but they bring folks like myself around to really try to make that the best it can be not only to to make money but really because they want to deliver the best the guest experience out there yeah you know and of course they had surveys at the end one at the exit war probably oh did you do one excellent for everything excellent for everything that's good it was great they had two one for mario kart one for the land itself mm -hmm. in which uh in some other surveys i know they teased mr donkey kong coming very soon but um, i'm not sure i'm not sure what the current uh, status is of uh i know it's been announced but i haven't seen anything about it much since yeah like because uh, we can't get here fast enough. <laughs> we need more Nintendo right now. Well, well based upon the feedback and I'm, the fact, and the I, responses I, I'm seeing from some other people, I think we'll see a lot of that. So that's great to hear. And, and there'll be a, a real good push that comes out of this uh, to, to make more kind of interactive properties, more game properties at, at par major parks, mm -hmm. smaller parks too, which for me is great because it means that more people will call me and say, hey, let's make more of this stuff. Um, and, yeah, uh, that's that's what I love doing. You'll be booked for uh, the next twenty years. <laughs> so, so ready, you'll have a nice not too much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the um, what was I gonna say? I can say, ah, oh, I had a thought. I had oh, it just slipped away. What was it? What was it? Oh my goodness, what was it? I totally forgot. Dang it. I hate when that happens. No, that's all right. It happens to me all the time. So just keep just keep moving with it. You know, it'll it'll come out the right time, right? Yeah. Uh yeah. Anyway, super cool. Can't wait for more. And it's like, ooh, it's, it's just perfect. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I you know, it just trips my mind because um because oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Universal, you know, most people would say. On a slower day, they're like, oh, just a, you know, a half day park or a one day park here in Hollywood. But I was like, man, after spending all day there, just a Nintendo yesterday, I'm like, you know, now that makes Universal at least a, a two day park if you take advantage of it. Be, I mean, Universal will get some more, uh, you know, two day tickets sold, I'm sure. Some, if they build their own hotel, hopefully it's hard one day. To take it all, all in, in a day. And like, I, I mean, exactly. I, I try to do it sometimes uh, with family. And usually about after about a half day, everyone's kind of burnt. You know, it's just, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And so you need to kind of go and, you know, just let that kind of filter through. you, <laughs> So you can exactly. go back to another room, even if you've been training for it. Like, you know, you can do all the laps, you got all the steps in. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's just a lot for your brain, I think, like to absorb it, it, so much stuff going on. So much going on. I, again, I, every time I forget there's, actually you know, other rides to go on <laughs> out there and I, mean, I just thought I right past them each time and the right past them again like wow this thing is gonna be a mega hit on february 17th when it opens and i'll be there on opening day to look at it cool we'll see if i can i can make it out there if so i'll hit you up and we'll do a ride together you should oh, three-day weekend presence day bring your family it's gonna be fun you got to make it out. You have to. You absolutely have to. You have to write your own creation. Yep. No, you know, I tell folks as much as um, I would love to ride it, and it'll be a great cathartic experience. Really, the, the best thing for me uh, will be to see the guests coming off the rides and the guests in the yes. app and in the land and talking and having fun. And uh, that that, for me, uh, will be uh, the most meaningful part. Yeah, it's fun to do it, and I'm, and I'm sure I'll I'll probably have tears of joy as I experience it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, when it really comes together, seeing your enthusiasm and like being able to witness that in park, I I opened another park a, a couple of years ago in Utah called Evermore Park, a sort of a, yeah, a, a theatrical park. Yeah, it's I don't know, I got some okay press and some bad press too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there is this idea when you entered the park you could sort of become whoever you wanted so i made this thing called a passport 
and we had this little line that we gave people when they entered the park. And it's, you know, who you are today is not who you are tomorrow. You know, um, uh, welcome to Evermore. Here's your passport, you know. Ooh. And um, basically, you could fill it out with whoever you wanted to be. And this one little girl, and this was like on the first day. So my son and I actually got to give them out to guests and they didn't know who we were. And it was, it was fun like that. Oh, that's fun. One little girl just like lit up and she knew, and like her parents didn't quite get it yet, but she knew she could be anyone. And she was so excited in that moment to make up a new self. And it was, I mean, it brought me to tears. It was just so, it was just such a touching moment uh, to see this child kind of transform just with one prompt on entering the park. So, you know, seeing those sorts of moments uh, at Super Nintendo World, I'm sure will be a really rewarding, not only for me, but, you know, everyone that was on the project. Yeah, God, that's wonderful. Man, the little girl, she must have had a great day that day. Like, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's one of the situations, a kid with their family, and it's it's sort of, um, you know, I've heard uh, other people uh, that work in attraction design speak of this sort of uh, transformative moment that you see sometimes inside of parks. And, uh, you know, you spoke of it when those two gentlemen you mentioned were kind of getting excited because they thought they could go on Mario Kart. And like for a second, they forgot they who they were. They were just like kids, right? They were in the moment. It was as pure Zen is what it is. Like it was, they were just in now, right? And, um, you know, so whenever you can kind of get a whole family to do that together. And in that situation, it kind of started with the little girl. And then, you know, the, the you could see the kind of fire of the magic circle kind of go out. And as her family started to understand that they could be characters in the park that day. Oh, we're not just going to go on a joy walk. Like, this is an adventure. Um, and that's that's a that's an exciting moment uh, for me as a designer to work towards that. And to get people just for a second, just even for a second to step out of themselves mm -hmm. um, and to step into uh, the fantasy that we, we all create, the guests create, the park creates, you know, and, and I, I don't remember the Walt quote exactly. I guess we should be wrapping up soon, but um, you know, the idea that parks under themselves are nothing, it's sort of like a game. Mm -hmm. an, an empty park is not alive. You think, you know, some people think, Oh, I'd love to go to the park one day when there's no one there. And I have oh, it's terrible. You know, yeah. You've been it. Yeah. You've done it. It's not fun. Um, you need other people in the queue. You need those other guests there. It's sort of like, you know. It adds nice energy to the whole area. Yeah. Like, and so that's really where it comes alive, right, um, is, you know, when we're there and we step inside it together as this sort of decision. It's almost like people that go to a horror movie, you know, and horror mm -hmm. fans. They go, oh, I want to be scared right now. I want to be terrified in a mm -hmm. safe way with with my friends in a, in a mm -hmm. room, right? So they go and they, with that expectation to be scared. Theme parks, yeah, you know, some, there is all kinds of emotions that we kind of can bring out. But people go there to kind of be pushed to the limit of experience and to, to kind of uh, step outside of themselves and to kind of forget the troubles of the real world more so than, than a lot of things. And that's really when it comes to live, when we kind of come there together and we're in that space and we really are kind of creating like the land um, you know, Super Nintendo Land lives when you're there, right? And without mm -hmm. you, it doesn't exist. It really doesn't. Because, yeah, if you don't have anybody, you know, pounding their power bands on the question blocks or playing the games and it's just all quiet and just like, well, the music will be going, but there's like, have we no energy? And what? you need the people. The people are, the people make it happen. Yeah. And even in the rain, you should have seen this. Even in the rain yesterday, it was pretty deep. It rained all day long. Nintendo was packed. The rest of the park had five minute waits, but Nintendo was packed. Packed, packed, packed. That's great. That was great. People in the rain were st just still showing up, and it was incredible. It it's all been a while since I caught a soft launch window. They're always, they're always fun. I think the last one I was at for a park I didn't make was at the Toy Story Land. Oh, Disney World. Hollywood mm. Studios, right? Yep. All right. How is that one? I haven't been. I was disappointed by it. Um, you know, I really um, thought that they were going to take it further. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it was one of these things where I started wondering who was making decisions at WDI. Slinky Dog has got a lot of fun, but it's mm -hmm. there's not really much to it. It's uh, it's a roller coaster uh, with mm -hmm. a Toy Story theme. Um, so it seems like a big missed opportunity, sort of like we had just spoke of. 
you know, because even a Toy Story, it's a, a little bit of a different property. Like, I mean, I expect to like be a land that I play. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, inside the, realm of, inside of the realm of Toy Story, um, and this just felt like a, a little theme park with um, Toy Story dressing, like even down to the teacups. Uh, so, mm. yeah, you know, um, particularly because you can see Galaxy's Edge in the in the distance, <laughs> like right there. <laughs> And then, you know, the, uh, gosh, I can't even remember what it's called. The, um, the previous attraction that was there, um, the e-ticket, um, the Toy Story oh. e-ticket. Um, the Mid Midway Mania? Yeah, Midway Mania. Thank you. So, yeah, Midway Mania, you know, it was a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Um, you know, and it's certainly part, I think, of the history of, of ride-based, I'm sorry, game-based attractions uh, as, as we look at it. But, um yeah, I mean, I, I expected something to kind of level up from that, and it was really just kind of dressing around that attraction more so. Um, so I, I thought it was a missed opportunity. The best thing are the tater tots. Yeah, and that one particular. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that? The tater <laughs> Oh, man, that's hilarious. But no, I say with Midway Mania, the, my arm always gets tired because I have to, you know, tug the thing on the gun and so at the end of the ride and if it's doing so much it's like it's not unlimited yeah it's a jammer it's a, it's I'm like, a I'm like, yeah it's yeah. an old school button masher yeah. and that's why i like with mario kart because just a simple press the button like a game controller almost and i don't keep going like this it's just boom 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 and i run out of shells so i actually have to get a break and I get more shells and boom 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 it's much you know my hand after going on two times Nearly in a row, my hand was not even close to being tired, which is fantastic. I, like, I like this system much better than Buzz Lightyear or anything where I'm shooting or I have to hold a gun or anything. It's, it's, love it's it. beautiful. I love it. That's my chef's kiss right there because it's um, what it shows me is that maybe we did it and we, we took it uh, further inside of a theme park and to make something that's really a little more game based because most of the game stuff inside of parks right now is really kind of shooter, gallery shooter based mm -hmm. and button masher, right? Um, so that's that's great to hear that you don't feel that way. Yeah, it's so much, so much easier. Like, like so much easier. And I like the head. The head is your you're aiming with your head. Again, it eliminates the need again for any type of gun and aiming. You're just gonna choop, your head is the aiming. You go boom, 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 boom. I hope any universal attraction that decides to be game based or shooter again uses the same type of technology because. Holding a gun and doing it, it's just, it's a lot. But the little steering wheel pressing the buttons, great stuff. Hopefully they learn from me. As a game designer, it's a little boring uh, because um, it's something that we've had as a culture for a long time. Mm -hmm. really to it. It's easy to do. Um, it's not very innovative. And especially, I think, with the, the violence uh, that we experience so heavily as a culture, sometimes I, I question how much we need to have uh them represented in our attractions you know sometimes like in the right way but you know i mean a shooting well i guess toy story shooting mechanic might make sense um but you know oh, yeah. the, the more we can move away to kind of different sorts of interaction uh gallery shooters are sort of old you know i mean we've been doing those and attractions uh for a long time and you know so uh, long so it's it's nice I mean, to, to again that baby step. I, I I wish I could say that you know we're, we've created you know an immersive MMO RPG or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know that that's that's going to be a little ways down the line before someone figures out how to do that at a park. Man, that's incredible! Wow, well, thank you so much for coming on. Where can anybody you. find you? I know you have you on Twitter. But do you have Instagram or anything anywhere you want people to yeah, follow you? I, I sort of got off of stuff personally in recent years. You can follow my new project at giantlands.com. Yes. I created an old school RPG um, with the idea of using it as a park you can step inside of in costume. And, you know, uh, we got live events and things like that. At this point, it's pretty indie. Um, my company's called Wonderfilled. Uh, we serve as clients. My personal website right now is down. Like I should totally uh, 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 fix it. And I will at some point. So that's narrativedesigner.com. Uh, but um, yeah, so Giant Lands is probably the best way to check out uh, what I'm currently uh, doing. I'm also a professor. I, uh, I teach at the University of Tampa. Uh, oh, wow. The next uh, generation of talent kind of learn how to make their dreams come true. 
Ah, that's incredible class. Game design. Yeah, I teach. Um, I'm a, a was, let's see. I'm a professor of film animation and new media. Um, so yeah, I do teach game, game design courses and 3D courses and digital media and, and things like that. I'm kind of new to it with this current position. So, but yeah, it's it's great fun and you know um, helps me the, use a range of my skills. And uh, you know, I, I think uh, something that's really exciting is that uh, more and more people are becoming kind of uh, interested uh, in these experiences. Where you know, uh, so there you go. There's Amusement Sparks uh, that I mentioned. It earlier. is. Yeah, you can go uh, check out uh, what, what he's produced. So he does our, our podcast. We have some episodes. Don't do it that regularly. But Andrew's done a great uh, job uh, with uh, Amusement Sparks. And I think he still is doing it. And so many different shows. I think that's how I found it. We met at a convention. And then I think we did a talk about a Halo park. That would be amazing. be neat, right? That would be very cool. This is cool. Yeah, I'm definitely have to definitely have to check. Yeah, well, out happy some to guys. talk about it with you anytime. Giant it's a hands. different thing because it's a independent project. You know, I did on my own uh, to really try to bring my dreams to life in terms of where I think we could go uh, with game parks. And I'm so glad that uh, you've been able to experience uh, Super Nintendo World um, and see uh, really the direction that that was what like kind of put the fire in me uh, to kind of to do this and to keep bringing. Uh, game-like experiences to real life. Man. Well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> tell you, you're going to be booked up for the next 100 years because it's <laughs> coming. It's, it, they're on their way, man. So, yeah, and I'll put these, I'll put the links for the pot, the website and the podcast in the description below. Okay. Great. And your Twitter as well. Oh, wait, did you say Twitter? Yeah, yeah, you can share my Twitter. That's probably like, the, I mean, that's, I think, the only real personal thing. I have a, a Facebook, but I have like seven friends right now because I only use it to manage pages. And then I'm like on LinkedIn, but that's sort of professional. So, um, yeah, probably Twitter is Twitter's probably the best place to find me right now. All right. Well, follow him on Twitter and check out his awesome podcast and his website, giantlands.com, and subscribe to me, Theme Park Wizard, on YouTube right now. Smash that like button. And as always, have a fantastic or a super day. <laughs> Thanks.